Hey guys, I figured I'd bring you guys this one last cast and then I'm going to take a quick break and uh, go with my girlfriend to see a movie. I'm hoping you guys won't mind that. Um, anywho, this one is our Zerg, excuse me, not our Zerg, our Protoss in the upper right hand corner in the red trunks. It would happen to be gets one Grandmaster's League player, if I do recall correctly. I don't, you know, I actually don't think any other member of Sket was actually a GM. But here we go. It's none other than Sket. Eternal. And then in the lower left hand corner, spawning as our Terran in the blue trunks. His name is apparently Prop Jimpo. Jimpo. Not entirely sure where that came from. Uh, possibly a Korean name. The romanization fits perfectly well in with Korean. But um, even that, I cannot say confidently nor fully full flown logically. This is a PVT matchup. Um, very few of these games tend to end relatively, like, you know, especially early, if that makes sense. And uh, let's just see how this game unfolds. Right now, we have a forward gateway going down. Not something dangerous, not something greedy on this map. I do want to say that I would not, I would only, okay, I would only recommend a double um, expo opening, like just directly throwing down a command center, a hatchery, or a nexus, if it was, if this was a uh, ZVT, and of course if you were the Zerg player yourself. Doing a double nexus opener as Protoss can be especially dangerous on that, on this map, because of the, uh, rather small size and the fact that Terran has the ability to hide double racks anywhere on the map. I would say this would probably be the most prominent location to do it. Possibly this one coming up as the second most prominent location. But here we are. Jimpo going in. Getting a read on his opponent. Sees that there's uh, two probes on gas and that's about it. And he's, putting, he's even putting a little attack on the uh, pylon right here. We do have a marine with a new skin. It can't be reverted just yet, but I'm sure a future patch from Blizzard will fix this problem. Um, and of course, the expo going down for Jimpo. I would, I would rather see this, you know, this probe kind of go over here, see what's going on over here now, find out whether or not there's an expo. But of course, that's the role of the zealot and the stalker, as well. Um, I don't believe. We don't have a stalker, actually. Or, excuse me, we don't have um, a zealot out on the map for Eternal just yet. Um, we do have him going for a pylon right now. Here we go. Double gas follow-up from Jimpo, and it looks like we have the factory going down. I wouldn't be surprised to see a starport follow-up. Um... The new 111 opener is a bit more potent versus Protoss than, say, the classic Wings of Liberty style one. But of course, uh, Wings of Liberty took about two years to figure out. And um, there was a lot of amazing play that we did see with the 111 style back then. But um, I'm thinking it's less likely that we're going to see uh, Banshees this time around. Maybe. Let me think here. Maybe we're going to see some Widow Mines get burrowed. But of course, this is all going to depend on the timing. And um, factory is about to finish up, so will there be a star part going down? We do see that uh, Eternal is actually following this up with a Robo Bay. And now Eternal actually has Stalker. I almost got a kill on a Marine. It actually, it just hit thin air. If you guys just paid attention to that last shot, it was actually target. It was actually targeting this red health Marine that's inside the bunker, and now it's been. Um, but like that guy disappeared just as he went inside the bunker, and it hit thin air. Alright, so the starport is now on the way for Jimpo. And an orbital command is now finished on both ends of the map. Of course, we got the Mothership Corps coming in and poking around. And we see that uh, Eternal is now no longer oblivious to what his Terran terrorist is going to be doing to him. We do have two Hellions that are just going to be running straight into uh, the mineral line of Eternal, I think. And, um... You're gonna get some damage done. It's just 
I don't, you know, whether it's mining time or it's whether it's going to be mining time or whether it's going to be actual probe kills is entirely up to just you know what we see from Eternal and and the ways of defenses. But here we go, stalkers coming back and one probe does get roasted. Ooh, what about a second one? Looks like he's actually kind of concerned with keeping those Hellions alive. These Hellions are supposed to die. They're supposed to get killed in order to exchange for probe kills, and it looks like these two are getting into the main just as the Immortal was birthed. Defensive cannon going down, and we got a few more probe kills going down. And... Yeah, it looks like the Hellion got taken down. Le both of them. We can see that the worker count is actually in favor of uh, Jimpo right now. You know, if we saw that um, Eternal was actually four workers ahead, then right now you'd be at 40 to the 35 and 2 of his opponent. And income-wise, those mules really make a difference. Twilight Council now on the way, and the question is, how are we going to see it followed up? Will there be maybe a... Um, will there be maybe a... What's the word I'm looking for? A dark shrine going down behind it. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that, considering uh, DTs did kind of get a buff in uh, Heart of the Swarm. That is to say, it is now cheaper than ever before to make a dark shrine. Um, you know, when this, when this concept was first introduced into the beta, I was just thinking to myself... What this is absurd, like a 100 gas, 100 mineral, uh, dark shrine. But then they kind of took it up to 150, 150, if I'm not mistaken. And here we go, the Hellions trying to get some economic damage done. They're not too concerned with going into the main. They're like, okay, so Protoss's main force isn't at the natural. That means they're in the main. And um, if I move into the main, I'm actually gonna get less probe kills that way because most of the Hellions will die in the process. All right, so let's see what what info does he have on his opponent. He does. Ah, uh, never mind. Okay, he just doesn't know that there's a Twilight Council up there. He knows that there's a Robo Bay. It's a two base build, and it looks like he himself is following this up with double armories. This screams to me that, given with what we see here, we're gonna see uh, basically a Hellbat tank composition. There's something I want to go back and check real quick. I was explaining to you guys the Dark Shrine. Yes, it's 150-150. I don't play Protoss, and I know that much because it is the bane of a Zerg's existence. <clears throat> Army supplies. Um, right now, we actually have Eternal a little bit behind. And more and more Hellions are being cranked out, and a few Widow Mines are being tacked on here and there for... Uh, Jimpo, he's actually just, well, if we look at the supply difference right now, not so much the army supply, but just the overall supply difference, it's actually quite uh, ridiculously in his favor. Two stalkers moving out to kind of deal with this one Hellion right here, and it looks like Eternal isn't too terribly concerned with it. He's like, okay, whatever. But, um, I don't know what to make of this. Just yet. I don't know, it seems like perhaps, just perhaps there's a timing that uh, Protoss can hit as we don't have, we do have blue, uh, the Infernal Pre-Igniter, but of course there's nothing new, really relatively new or shocking about this composition, aside from the fact that we have um, Widow Mines being added to it, we do have our Protoss going up to his third base already. And now we have Terran taking his third at the same time that we see Protoss only then gearing up to make his third go down. And uh, something very peculiar about this, it actually looks like it's Eternal is actually concerned with moving out right now, doing some damage. And with that being said, we actually see that Jimpo's Hellion there just kind of tripped it up. And now there are a ton of Widow Mines here. Question is, what is going to happen? What are we going to see from Jimpo? Or it's going to be from Eternal. He's he's ready to move into this. Does this one observer see any Widow Mines? It sees two. But what about the rest of this? Uh, single Zealot does sacrifice itself to take that down. It looks like we did get some Zealots to run in here. I think this was uh, done successfully with a Warp Prism that I might have missed. I do apologize, guys. It wouldn't surprise me as there is a Robo Bay somewhere in this game. 
the zealot just going to work on the infrastructure right now killing one of the five factories that's out there and now we have the main armies going at it toe to toe and it looks like Eternal is down just a little bit, but he's got a lot more Zealot reinforcements coming in. Too many Hellbats up into the main. And Vikings are in production. Vikings just came in. And um, Eternal, even though he's down on supply right now, is actually victorious. Um, I'm a little curious. Where exactly was this? He, You know, the army supply is relatively even for both players. It's just that everything was out of position for uh, Jimpo. And it looks like Jimpo couldn't quite get the engagement he was looking for. I think he was in a winning position given the income that we see right here. But if we just check what we have here, you know, there's far too much in the in the way of melee units. Ah. I don't know. I think I, I I'm thinking that maybe just maybe Jimpo just he left too early. That's just what I'm thinking. But at any rate, um, this was still a pretty sick game. You know, Eternal was concentrated on cutting into the heart of his opponent and cutting it out, and he did so successfully. You know, he was so close. He was just coughing at the at the front door of Terran and all this so if you guys liked what you saw just go ahead and click on the subscribe button to my channel um I will be back in a couple of hours to cast the rest of the replays I just chose this one because it was the smallest in file and in, in file size and thus the shortest um this will be breaker I'll see you guys next time